Thank you for listening. I hope this is valuable to you. Um, can there be gay Christians? Um, yes and no. Sounds like I'm trying to appease both sides or something. Um, in one way, no. You have to not reject you, but reject the gay lifestyle. And then God will help you with the inwards, inward passions and desires and your tendencies and all that. But another way, that's why I mean that you can't be a Christian and have gay feelings. You know, feelings aren't wrong. It's when you act on them. So a sin becomes a sin when you act on it. And it could be thought if you keep thinking about it, like pornography is sin because you're, you're lusting and everything and you're not doing any acts. Although there could be physical action with yourself. Oh, sorry, I'm just being real. But, and that's sinful. But temptation isn't sin. It's when you keep looking at the temptation to become sin <laughs> or you do it you actually do something about it um so the, our discussion right here is has god made the alphabet you know and lesbian gay and all that so this is my last um thing for right now i might do another series and throw this one out i've learned more i gotta get more i can do it better or whatever but um we've we've kind of in a review we talked about i'm not gonna write it all down um you know, that I, I base my worldview in scriptures. I believe God knows what he's talking about more than man. I believe that was of God, that book, lots of reasons. Original, you know, that original design, if you take a good look at it, there's no deviance from that. Uh, the next one was environment, no, um, fall. We fell from the original. And now our lives are way more susceptible to all sorts of stuff that can, that are not of God. And then we had the um, history, personal histories, you know, make a big difference in a lot of the people who have the sexual orientations, not all of them. Um, and then the environment where they've been brought up, their nature, that's their own nature and all, could like be kind of, I don't take this wrong, contorted or something. You know, it's a contortion of what God's original design is up here, you know. And then after that, I believe I talked about literal demonic spirits, which I think are way more, I don't think, I think that should be talked about more in the church. I personally believe that there are spirits influencing this. We, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, as well against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is Ephesians chapter 6, I think, verse 13. All right, so there's evil spirits. And then um, the last discussion that um, I think that we did was, um, what was the last discussion? <laughs> that I just did was um, salvation. Oh my goodness, how could I forget that one? <laughs> Some most important one. Yeah, it's like God delivers and changes and heals and makes free. He liberates people. And uh, even, if you, even if you have tendencies that you have to kind of restrain and sacrifice, it's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be that big. Just focus on him and walk in him and he gives you power over those things. Whether, whether that's your nature or whether it's demonic spirits all your life attacking. Although I believe when you're coming at the demonic spirit things that uh, it's gonna be, whoever wins is gonna be the one who resolves it. Like, okay, I'm done with this sin. I'm done with this temptation. I'm done with this thinking. That's not me. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. When you become saved, you become a new creation. That's Second Corinthians 5, 17. So, you know, and if the enemy finally realizes he can't get you and persuade you saying, no, I'm done with you, he's not gonna waste his time, you know. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, he, he, he's smart. He's, he's an evil genius, really, really slick. All right, so, in the, and then the last discussion I'd like to talk about is um, decision, choice, whatever. So I'll put this as decision. And this is where, what are you gonna do? Now, I may have not given you good answers. You're not satisfied. I would encourage you to make a decision to go after God because I don't care what humans say. You know, they could be wrong. I can be wrong on some of the stuff I said. Um, I don't care, and, but others are wrong. They say, well, you were born that way. How do you know? And then there's this science that says, oh, we found a gene. But then there's refutal, refuting science, science that ref, scientists that refute that. There's no real proof in their, in their studies. And they really cut at it and say they're flaws. So you don't have itching ears. I mentioned that earlier. You just kind of go with what you want to make you comfortable and what you like. You're not God. What does God like? He loves you. I mean, no question. But 
he has a reason on why he made you and what you're supposed to do. And it's not that if it's contrary to the word of God and the will of God. All right. So decision, you have a decision to make. So I, here's a, I just make it simple. I could do a bunch of stuff and it was like, oh, it's too much. One is uh, I would encourage you to submit yourself to God, even if you don't understand it all. By the way, the greatest faith and the greatest obedience that someone could have and the greatest is love is it's sort of it's not blind faith, blind obedience, but it's an act of faith that you go. I don't understand everything, but I choose to believe that God knows what he's doing. I'm going to submit to him. Oh, there it is right there. You got victory, honey, sir. You got it. You're on the right track right there. And if you still don't know too much about it, keep seeking. He's patient. He's been patient with you thus far. Uh, but really go after him. And he'll hold on. He'll look at you and say, no, that person's intense. That person wants me. He wants the truth. Or she wants the truth. Ooh, go. But I would encourage you, if you do have enough truth to really see that there's a God and all that, submit to him. Just say, okay, I don't understand it all. By the way, the next part of that verse, this is James chapter 4. I think it's verse seven or eight okay so the next part of that verse it says submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you see there it is where you just take your stand and you resist him he's not going to fool around he's not going to keep going he might come back and he might come back but eventually he'll say i'm wasting my time on that i'm going to try and get her or him in some other area of his or her life but submit this whole thing to god say okay i've got i i don't agree but this is if this is what you want here oh he loves it and do it do it like he'll be all over that you know hang in there he does test us he wants us to see if you're sincere you know this hang in it's like a child who comes up to the father he's not playing games he's not trying to be difficult god's not a difficult twist his arm sort of god he's stubborn and obstinate and really doesn't like you or something but a kid comes up and says can i have this and you say well i'm not sure we'll see and you come up again, the child keeps coming up. And I know of parents that do that. I work with kids. And parents literally say, ah, I want to see if they're really sincere. I just heard a story about that um, of a father who waited and the daughter didn't really continue asking. She wanted a horse. And it, she told me that if she would have kept going, her dad later told her, because it's expensive and all that, he would have bought the horse and arranged it. But he, she just asked maybe three times. I don't know how many times few times so. so it's so god's not why doesn't he answer your prayers he he wants to he wants to work in you and change you and get you out of apathy and le lethargy and laziness and let's go after it intensity and you really want it oh you go after him and you submit yourself to him watch what he does i have no idea but he's going to do all sorts of things in your life he did it with me he's still doing it all right so submit yourselves therefore to god so um surrender surrender to god just give it to him even if you don't understand everything. Again, a child who really comes to the father or a mother and they don't understand why the dad is keeping this him from playing in the street, like is that's kind of unfair and it's it's I'm bound and feel bound. I'm not it's not it's bondage. You know, I don't feel free and all that and you're keeping me from fun, you're keeping him from what I want to do. You know why? There's there's reasons for it. It's for your good, not for your harm. God is a very, 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 very good God. It's too much evidence there. All right, submit. Two, um, and I'm going to just bring one passage, one, and I mentioned it the last video, um, because it's, it's, it starts in the thought life. So I would suggest in your decision that you, you decide that I'm going to capture every thought. See, this is, this is pretty huge here. Your thought life. What you think, because what you think, you go, oh, I, I see this person, I go, oh, I like her, the, the, her, him, and all that. Okay, capture the thought, bring into captivity, and then and just release it and go go from, uh, release it out of your mind is what I'm saying. And then go for the right thing. Stay on the path. Of, it's a narrow road that leads to life. The wide road is leads to destruction. So it, it may be tough and stressful for you and pressured and all that. Just give it to God. Let him work in you. And the more you pray from your heart, you really bellow it out. Like I've had tons of sobbing. And maybe you've done that. Hang in there. By faith. Take him by faith too. God, it's, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Uh, Hebrews 11, 6. And it says, For he that comes to him must believe that he is, he's existent, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You need to believe that he's going to diligently, I mean, that he's going to reward you for your diligent seeking. 
Don't, don't play around with it. Go serious and go after him until you get the answer. He will reward you. All right, so capture is, a, is another thing, is capture the thoughts. By the way, this is taken, if you, if you want to take notes, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 or 5. There's a, a, several verses together. It's a really good one. Three is the last one, and I've said it over and over, but this is your key. This, is the, uh, this really is the key to everything in life. And it's so simple. It's like, really? That's all you're going to say? Prayer. Prayer. <laughs> Prayer is the answer uh, of your activity on how you're going to get deliverance. And if you decide that you're going to submit to him the best you can, you decide to capture all your thoughts, you'll be amazed on how you won't have that feeling, the emotion and the attraction and the body attraction and everything. When the thoughts are, you're thinking the right thing. Um, you know, let your, uh, the Bible says, your heart, your mind should be true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, praise. Think on these things. If you do those, that list, it's Philippians chapter 3, by the way. If you do that, um, whatever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous things, virtue, not vice. And then um, virtue, praise, worthy things, good things, you know, keep your mind positive and thinking on, on, on God's will and what he wants what you think he wants here. And then, uh, and then, and then, you know, that's a capturing. Then, um, then you'll have, you'll be, you'll be a lot easier. Your battle, the battle that you're going through, the struggle that you're going to go through, um, it will, ha will be okay. And prayer is everything. Why? Because you can't do it with that, without him. I can't do things without him. Are you kidding? I found that out. We're pretty helpless. <laughs> We're pretty amazing, superior creatures in the, in the world. And God's blessed us with that. We're human beings top of the list of the animal chain, the kingdom of life or whatever, plant life, animal life, us. But, and we're not animals, by the way, but my point is, is still we're pretty weak, helpless, ignorant. I am, you know, I know I'm ignorant. Um, but I found a lot out in, in the prayer closet. I've gotten together with him a lot. And he's met me. <laughs> I, I don't deserve it, but he, I'm nobody special. But he is. And he wants, to, he wants to meet with you, and he wants to help you. So I, I could go on and on. Anyway, I'm so glad that you listened to the series. I hope it wasn't a waste of your time. I'm, I'm, I appreciate it. If you came this far, good for you. So I just I want to encourage you, especially on the last two. Salvation is from him. Decision is you. Make the right choice. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve, it says in Joshua. And the Bible says in, in, he, in, in Deuteronomy, it says, choose life, you know. I set before you life, death, blessing, cursing. Therefore, choose life. The other things lead to death, misery, destruction. Come to God, find out what his plan is, his real design, and you'll see that um, he's there to help you, save you, make you whole, change you. It's exciting. It's an adventure to walk with God. Thank you so much. I hope you... Uh, Hope you got something out of it. Even if you didn't, go down to the comments and let's communicate with each other. I'd love to dialogue with you. God bless you. Seriously.